The world is in love with football. From the bustling streets of Rio de Janeiro to the vibrant cities of Europe, the sport captivates billions. Every four years, the FIFA World Cup becomes a global spectacle. It is a testament to the game's unparalleled ability to unite people across borders, languages and cultures. But what is it about this sport that evokes such passion? Perhaps it is the simplicity of the game. It requires minimal equipment, making it universally accessible. Or maybe it is the raw emotion it evokes. The roar of the crowd, the agony of defeat, the ecstasy of victory. Football is a microcosm of life itself. Its history, much like the game itself, is full of twists and turns. Long before the bright lights and massive stadiums, football existed in simpler forms. These ancient games played across the globe offer us a glimpse into the enduring appeal of kicking the ball. They remind us that the love for the sport is deeply ingrained in our collective human experience. The origins of football are shrouded in the mists of time. Long before the modern game took shape, ancient civilizations engaged in activities that bear a striking resemblance to the sport we know and love. These ancient ball games offer a fascinating glimpse into the historical roots of football, revealing that the basic human instinct to kick a ball around is far from a modern phenomenon. This game, often described as a form of military training, involved kicking a leather ball through a net strung between two poles. Kuju was not merely a physical activity, it was deeply ingrained in Chinese culture, enjoyed by emperors and commoners alike. Across the globe, in Mesoamerica, civilizations like the Aztecs and Mayans played a game known as Pocatok. This intense and often violent game held deep religious significance. The ball, representing the sun, was moved across a court using only hips, elbows and knees. Pocatok was more than just a game, it was a ritual, a spectacle that intertwined sport, religion and warfare. The ancient Romans also had their own version of a ball game known as Harpastum. This game, played with an inflated pig bladder, involved two teams vying for possession of the ball. Harpastum was known for its physicality and strategic complexity. It was a testament to the Roman Empire's love for spectacle and competition. These ancient ball games, though different in their rules and cultural context, shared a common thread. They involved kicking or propelling a ball with the feet or other body parts. They highlight the universality of the human desire to engage in physical activity, competition and entertainment. These games were more than just pastimes, they were woven into the fabric of their respective societies. They served as forms of military training, religious rituals and social gatherings. Understanding these ancient origins allows us to appreciate the rich tapestry of history that underpins the modern game of football. As centuries passed and empires fell, the ancient ball games evolved and spread. In medieval Europe, a chaotic and often violent form of folk football emerged. Played across towns and villages, these games involved an unruly mob of players attempting to move a ball to a designated goal. There were few rules and matches often descended into brawls. These medieval football matches were far removed from the structured sport we know today. They were unpredictable, chaotic and often dangerous. Buildings were damaged, windows shattered and injuries were commonplace. The sheer scale and unruliness of these games alarmed the ruling classes, who viewed them as a threat to public order. Despite their chaotic nature, these medieval games played a significant role in shaping the future of football. They fostered a deep-rooted passion for the sport among the common people. These games kept the spirit of kicking a ball alive through the ages. Section 5, A King's Dilemma, Edward II and the Banning of Football. The unruly nature of medieval football did not sit well with everyone. King Edward II of England, concerned about the disorder and violence associated with the game, issued a royal decree in 1314 banning the sport. This proclamation marked one of the earliest attempts to suppress football. Edward II's ban, however, proved largely ineffective. The game was too deeply ingrained in the social fabric of England. People continued to play in defiance of the ban. Football, it seemed, was here to stay. Despite attempts to suppress it, football persisted, adapting and evolving over the centuries. It was a testament to the sport's enduring appeal. No royal decree, it seemed, could extinguish the people's love for the beautiful game. 
Section 6, Birth of a Sport, English Public Schools and the Standardization of Football. As we enter the 19th century, football underwent a significant transformation in England. It transitioned from a chaotic folk game to a more structured and organized sport. This shift occurred within the hallowed halls of England's public schools. Each school had its own set of rules, leading to variations in the game. However, a growing desire for standardization emerged. Students from different schools wanted to compete against each other under a unified set of rules. This desire for standardization culminated in a series of meetings in the 1860s. Representatives from different schools gathered to codify the rules of football. These meetings laid the foundation for the modern game. And Section 7, the Football Association, dawn of a new era. The year 1863 marked a pivotal moment in the history of football. Representatives from 12 clubs and schools met at the Freemasons Tavern in London. Their aim was to establish a clear and unified set of rules for the game. This historic meeting led to the formation of the Football Association, the oldest governing body in football. The FA's rulebook provided a standardised framework for the sport, paving the way for its development and growth. The establishment of the FA marked the birth of modern football. It provided a platform for the sport to flourish, fostering competition and instilling a sense of order and structure. Section 8. Across the Seas. Football's journey to global domination. With the formation of the FA and the standardization of rules, football gained a strong foothold in England. But the sport's ambitions were not confined to the British Isles. Football soon embarked on a remarkable journey across the globe, spreading its wings to captivate audiences far and wide. The game's global expansion was fueled by a number of factors. British sailors, merchants and soldiers, travelling to distant corners of the world, carried their passion for football with them. They introduced the sport to locals, planting the seeds for its future growth. The simplicity and accessibility of football also contributed to its rapid spread. It required minimal equipment, making it easy to adopt in diverse cultures and socio-economic settings. All that was needed was a ball, a level surface and a shared enthusiasm for the game. Section 9, A World United, the first international football match. The year 1872 witnessed a landmark event in the history of football, the first ever international match. England, the birthplace of the modern game, faced off against Scotland in a highly anticipated encounter held in Glasgow. The match played in front of a crowd of 4,000 spectators ended in a goalless draw. However, its significance extended far beyond the final score. It marked the beginning of international football competition, laying the foundation for future rivalries and tournaments. The first international match captured the world's imagination, showcasing the power of football to transcend national boundaries and unite people through a shared passion for the sport. Section 10, unforgettable moments. From Christmas truces to World Cup upsets. As football's popularity soared, it became intertwined with moments of historical significance. During World War I, a remarkable event unfolded on Christmas Day, 1914. Amidst the trenches of Europe, soldiers from opposing sides laid down their arms and engaged in impromptu games of football. This spontaneous truce, a testament to the unifying power of sport, provided a brief respite from the horrors of war. It showcased the extraordinary ability of football to foster camaraderie and shared humanity even in the darkest of times. Football has also been the backdrop for unforgettable moments of triumph and despair. Uruguay's stunning victory over Brazil in the 1950 World Cup final, known as the Maracanazo, remains etched in footballing folklore. This unexpected upset, witnessed by a crowd of over 200,000, sent shockwaves through the footballing world and cemented Uruguay's place in World Cup history. Section 11. The beautiful game football as a unifying force. From its humble origins in ancient civilizations to its status as a global phenomenon, football has come a long way. It has evolved over centuries, shaped by cultural exchanges, social movements and technological advancements. Today, football stands as more than just a sport. It is a cultural force, a shared language that transcends borders and unites people from all walks of life. The passion, excitement and drama that unfold on the pitch 
resonate with billions around the globe. Whether it is the roar of the crowd, the skills of the players, or the unpredictable nature of the game, football has an undeniable ability to captivate and inspire. It is a testament to the enduring power of human ingenuity, athleticism, and the shared love for a simple game.